Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption, and whilst I'm working on my little demo level here, I need the ability to pick up objects like this sword here. So when I complete quests and stuff, it will be added to my inventory, but I currently don't have an inventory, so when I run up and pick it up, no matter what I pick up, it just disappears and nothing happens. So I need the ability to actually hold it in an inventory. Now there are countless different inventories out there, but the one I'm going to go with is the Skyrim based one. Based on an asset pack I already have by Wemrexa, this has asset pack I got from a Humble Bundle a while ago and I really like using it, I'm not an artist. So I'm going to compile something like this. The first part we're just going to build the logic in so it's all there, then the second part we'll look at compiling the UI like so. So the first thing we need to do is actually get our inventory up and running and at the moment I have this item here and it's part of a pickup sword blueprint here and all this is is just to house the model like so but it inherits from another blueprint I've got called BP Pickle, which stores a trigger, which is where we run into it and it tells the player that they've picked it up, and a rotating movement here. And this just literally rotates the object. The event graph for this is really simple. All it does is check if the player has hit it. If it has, it calls the pickup method. The pickup method checks if it needs to complete any quest of any kind. And if it doesn't, then it calls finish. And then in the finish method, it just destroys the blueprint. That's why it disappears. So we need to modify this so it houses an item that we can pick up, storing in our inventory. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my content drawer. And inside my items, I'm going to right click blueprints. And I'm going to create a new struct called S underscore item. And I'm going to open this up. And in here, we're going to store all of our items details. So the first one we'll store is its name. And I'm going to call it name. And for translation, I'm going to give it a type of name. The next I'm going to store a weight and that will be an integer. The final thing we'll need for later is a way to actually reference it back to the object because once we destroy it we need to be able to reference it again. So I'm going to add another variable here and I'm just going to call this actor and in here I can basically search for any blueprint I want and I'm just going to keep it a type of actor. So I'm going to search for actor here and when you scroll down you'll see actor under object types and I'm going to click soft class reference. So this soft class reference will not load into memory unless we actually try to call it which should be a lot more efficient and i'm going to save that to test if it's working i can jump into default values i can set a name i can set a quantity and in your actor you'll not be able to pick anything in the world because we will have destroyed it but you'll be able to find anything in your content drawer so if i were to search for my sword for example i will see my custom sword there so i can click it then i can spawn it whenever we need to use it so that's working perfect the next step is we actually need to tell this pick up here that you are this item use the details we've just given you so i'm going to jump into my pickup script here and where i've got item name here i'm just going to delete it because we don't need it and i'm going to drop a new variable in called details and this will be a type of our s item and uh, tick the little eyeball so we can set its details i will tick expose on spawn to help anything out later and we can save it now i'm going to jump into my sword here because i have a blueprint specific for the sword so we can do more stuff with it later and you will see in the class defaults we will be able to see the details here so i can open this up and start populating it so it'll be a sword the weight will be 14 randomly and the actor will be itself so pick up sword i'm going to save and compile that now we need to set the inventory up and working now i don't want the player to be the only one in the entire world with an inventory just like games like sky or Grand Theft Auto, each person could be holding some specific items. So I need all of my NPCs to have an inventory as well. So what I'm going to do is create something called an actor component. Now if I were to jump into my player here, you will see your components down the side underneath all of your main parts. You can't drag a component into the world, you can't touch it or do anything with it, but you can reference it if you hold the object that, that holds the component. So in my content drawer here, in blueprints, I'm going to create a new folder called components. And in here, I'm going to create a new blueprint, and it'll be a type of actor component. And I'm going to call it BPC for blueprint class inventory. As you can see, it's got the same icon. And now that we've created this as a component, we can come to the player and add it directly to them. And now we can give them an inventory. And I can do the same for all my NPCs as well. Perfect. So in the inventory here, I'm going to delete the starting methods. The first thing an inventory needs is slots. It needs a way to store items. 
So we need a new variable for it, but we need a specific variable that'll store the item and the quantity. So just like we did before, inside the components, I'm gonna create a new blueprint and it'll be a type of structure and I'm gonna call it S inventory slot. In here, just like we did before, we can add our variables. So I'm gonna add the first variable of item and this will be our S underscore item. And then I can add another one under this and it'll be quantity, just like that. And we can jump back into the app component. I can add a new variable and I'll just call this slots for inventory slots. The type will be S inventory slot and I'll tip the little eyeball and then I'll set the type to be a map and we're going to use a map because a map contains two values a key and the, the actual data the key will be our item name so it'll be unique so it'll be sword or shield iron shield stuff like that whereas the data will be the value will be our struct so I'll set the value to be s inventory slot and I'll set the type the key to be a name just like so and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new function called add and this will be where we add to the inventory so the first thing we need to do when we call add is we need to tell it what item we're adding which is where we'll pass our item details in and how many of them we're adding if you don't want to do the how many you're adding part you can just default it to one or whatever quantity you want to so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to click this function and I'm going to add an, in an input and I'll call it item. And this will be a type of S underscore item, like so. And then I'll add another input called quantity. And this will be a type of integer. If you don't want the quantity, just ignore it. From here, we need to check if the slots already contains the item we're referencing. So I'm going to drag the slots out. And I'm going to, from here, I'm just going to do find, like so. And then find, you need to give it a key. And it will tell you whether it exists or not. Well, we already know what the key is because we've got it from our item name. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to get our item. Because we're in a function, we can reference these variables input, these input variables anywhere in the event graph. So I'm going to drag from the item and I'm going to do break. And then I'm going to drag the name into the find like so. And this will give us a Boolean and the actual item if it finds it. So I'm going to add a branch node by holding B and clicking, connect up my condition and my exit pin. So if this returns true, it's found the item, it already exists. So what I can do in that case is I can drag this item off up here and I can do set members in inventory slot here. By clicking this, you can tick at the side what you want to modify or change. And in our case, we just want to change the quantity because we've got a new quantity. And I'm going to connect this up to the true pin. There we go. So what we need to do now is we need to actually get the quantity from the slots. So from this one here, I'm going to drag down and I'm going to do break as well. And this will basically tell us what it's already got. And we've got a quantity, so I'm going to drag off, I'm going to do a plus, and then I'm going to add our new quantity from here by doing get quantity. And then we can add it together and then connect it in. The last thing we have to do now that we've updated the quantity is add it back into the slots. Now you might think when we're updating it, not adding it, why would we add it back in? The add key here, the add node, will also check if it exists. So if the key that we give it exists, then it will simply update it. Otherwise, it will add it new. So I'll drag the struct into it like so. And then for the item name, I'm just going to do get item, which is the input variable we give, gave it. I'm going to split it and just do item name like so. And then I can highlight all of this and give it a comment of add new item like so. The next step is adding the item if it doesn't exist, which is, again, super easy. So I'm going to drag the slots out here because if it's hit false, we already know it doesn't exist. And I'm going to come up from here and just type add like so. And then we can connect up the exec pin. For the key, we can just drag in the item name from there like so. And for the item, I'm going to write click it and I'm going to do split struct pin and this will give us our item and our quantity which we have both of so from the item I'm going to drag out and I'm going to do get item and then for the quantity I'm just going to do the exact same thing but for get quantity like so and that's it that will successfully add it to the inventory if you are doing a weight based game where you sh where you check if they're overweight or if they can't add more than x amount of items you could add something before or after this adding or the updating to display the message to the user but for me i'm all right for now so as a quick test to see if this is actually working i'm going to go back to my bp pickup here and where we call finish before i destroy the item i'm going to drag this across here and just under the finish i'm going to get the player pawn like so and i'm going to cast it to my bp player and if it casts successfully then i'm going to drag from here i'm going to type add inventory and under bpc inventory you can see our add function will pop up so i can drag this out format it nicely connect it all back up and you will see it is requesting an item and a quantity well the details we already have so we can add that in and for the quantity 
I'm just going to add another variable here just solely for the pickup. We don't want to add it to the details. I'm going to set it to an integer and I'm going to connect it up, compile and save. The last thing I'm going to do is give the quantity a default of one. So everything by default has a quantity of one. And now when we test a game and we run up to the sword, you will see absolutely nothing happens. The sword destroys, but we don't know if it's actually in the inventory or not. So we need to add a little debug window until we have done the UI. So in the player here, I'm going to come right down to the bottom and I'm going to type in debug I and the debug I keys are specific keys that will only work in the editor. And I think it works in the development release as well, but it's a key that only you can use. So I'm gonna search for debug key I here for inventory. When it's pressed, I'm gonna get the inventory, I'm gonna get the slots, and I'm gonna get the keys like so. Then we can connect the keys up. I can run a for each loop over this array. And then from this for each loop from the loop body, I'm gonna drag out and do a print string. This print string, I'm gonna drag off and I'm gonna do an append like so. And then in the array element, I'm gonna drag it into the top one, which will print out sword. Then in here, I will put a space dash space, add another pin. And then from the slots, I will do a find. I will connect up the array key to there so we can find the element. And I will split the struct pin here, but I will drag in the quantity. So this will tell us sword and it will say you've got five or three or something. And if I go back to Roman scene and start the game, you can see if I press I, nothing will print out at the top. But if I run out and pick up the sword and press I now, you can see we've got one sword like so if i were to come and add some more swords but i'll also come in and add a, a different type of sword but it should be sword two and now if we try it when we're in and we pick up the first sword and we tap the i key you see it says we've got one sword if we pick another sword up and press i it says we've got two swords three swords perfect and now we can grab this sword which is a different one and it says we've got three of sword one and one of sword two. Perfect. But what if we want to drop an item? So inside our inventory again here, I'm going to go to the functions and I'm going to add a new function of drop. And this will be almost identical to the add function that I will add an import of type item and it will be S item and it will have a quantity to say how many you want to drop. Again, this bit's optional. And the first thing we need to do for safety is to just make sure we actually contain the item. So I'm going to get the item. I'm going to break it. I'm going to split it and then just drag the item name in. I'm going to hold B and add a branch. And if we do have the item, then we can remove that quantity of it. So I'm going to drag off from this item here and I'm going to do a break like so. I'm going to drag off from the quantity and I'm going to do a minus, a subtract, and I'm going to add in our get quantity like so. So it'll get the item and it will minus the quantity from it. From this, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to do a double equals. I'm going to do a less than or equal like so. If it's less than or equal zero, it basically means we've run out of the item. We don't have it anymore so we can remove it from the inventory now so if it's true that we're less than zero i'm going to drag the slots and i'm going to do remove and in the true the key that we're going to remove is simply going to be our item name and that will completely remove it from the inventory so we don't have it anymore otherwise it'll report we've got minus one or something like that however if it's false that means we do have the item and we still have some in stock so for example if we have five we remove two we still have three we need to add it back into the inventory that we already have so i'm going to come across to the slots find here i'm going to drag this off here and i'm going to do a set members in slot just like we did before from the false I'll drag it into the set members. I'll tap the quantity option here and I will drag in our new quantity from here. And then from our slots, we can simply do add. Just like before, if it already exists, it will simply update it. I can drag that in there. And then our, our item details will be our struct out like so. And that's how we remove an item. So in order to test this, I'm going to jump back to my player. I'm going to add a new debug key of O. I, I don't know why O is next to Y. It makes sense to remember. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go off and get our slots here. And I'm going to actually check if it's got any keys. Because if we've got an empty inventory, we don't want it to crash the game, even in development. So I'm going to drag from the keys and I'm going to do a length check. If it's more than zero, I'm going to add a branch, connect it up. If it hits the false on this branch, it means we've got no items. We're not going to do anything. But if it hits true, True, then we, we're just for test purposes going to get the first item from the inventory and just drop one of them so i'm going to come off and get our our slots here and i'm going to do a keys connect it up to the true and then from the output we can just drag off a get node here which will get us the first item it finds and then from the slots we can do a find 
and we can connect up the key like so. So that'll give us one item at the very top of the inventory, its entire inventory slot. We can break the item slot there to get the item, and then we can drag our inventory in, and we can do drop like so. The drop wants a quantity, so we'll just say we're gonna drop one, and then the item, I will connect up the item like so, and then the exit pins. So now every time we come off and press the O key, it will try to drop something until we have nothing. So we'll come in and I'll press the O key and you can see nothing's happening because we've got an empty inventory. But if I pick the first item up, it'll say we have one sword. So if I press I, I can pick another sword up and we've got two swords. If I press the O key, it's just dropped one. So now if I press I, we only have one sword. If I get the other two swords, like so, press I, you can see we've got two swords and one sword too. But if I tap the O key and then tap the inventory again, you can see we have one sword and one sword too. If I press O key twice, we have nothing in the inventory anymore. Fantastic. So now it's saving our inventory. We now have a way to add to the inventory and we now have a way to drop the inventory. So the only other one we can do is a check function. And the check function is primarily going to be used for questing and stuff like that to say, have they got this item in the inventory? So I'm going to add a new function called get. And then in here, just like before, we can have two parameters. The first one being item, the type of S item, and the next one being quantity, being integer. The quantity is optional, and it will only check if they have that amount of the quantity or at least this quantity. So it would be good for the get before you sell an object. If you say you're going to sell three objects, do you have three objects? I'm going to jump to the drop method and just like we keep doing, I'm going to copy all of this initial branch and the break selection to say, do we actually have the item in the inventory we're trying to drop? This is just in case somebody's trying to exploit the game or a developer's not done something. It's a safety check, like so. So that'll actually check, do we have the item? If we do have the item, then we need to compare the quantity and say, do we have at least this quantity? So from the quantity here on the break, I'm just going to say greater or equal to, and then the option from here will be the quantity. So I'll do, do a get quantity and I will plug it in. Now we need a way to return whether or not we have that item. So I'm going to come over and click my function here. And in the outputs, you can expand it and add an output. So I'm going to add a single output of a bool saying has item. And then I'm going to set this to a boolean like so. Then I'm going to add another item of has item with quantity. So then in the code, you can distinguish and show specific error messages saying you have this item, but you don't have enough of the quantity. And you can see it's added a return node for us. So I'm going to drag this down to this bottom one. The has item, we already know is true. So I'm going to tick it. And the has item with quantity, I'm just going to drag in our Boolean here. And this will be connected to the true, like so. So if it comes down, it will check if we have the item. If we don't, then we need to copy the return node and we'll just untick both like so. So if it doesn't have the item, it'll just return two falses. If you do have the item, then it'll return that you have the item and then it'll check whether you've got the quantity. So this entire thing has three return states. Everything's false, everything's true, or one's true and one's false, just like that. You can never have an item but have the quantity, so that's we can ignore that state. So now we can save and compile, and we'll jump back to our player to do the final debug key. So the only other option next to O is the P key. So I'll do debug key P. I will get our inventory and our keys, just like so. I will drag in the inventory and the slots. I will do a find, like so. And we want to find the sword. So we want to find the sword in our items. So I'm going to add a branch here, connect up to it. And then just for dummy's sake, we pretend we've got an item there. And then from our inventory here, we can do a check. And I will call the function get, like so, add it into the true. I will break this pin here and give it the item. And we want to say, do they have two? And then from this get, I can do a print string. From the in string, I will append. Then we can drag the two variables into it. And this will tell us, do we have the item or not? From the false tag, I will just drag down, add a string and say, you do not have a sword. So if I click P key now, you'll see it says you do not have a sword. I was like, oh, okay. So if I come down here and pick a sword up like so and press the P key, it will say true, false. So we have a sword, but we don't have two. So I'll pick sword two up. And you'll see it'll still say true, false. We only have one sword. If I pick two of them up, press the I key, you can see we have three swords. So if we press it P key now, it'll say true, true, because we have the swords. So if you were to go up to a shop and try to sell them three swords, this can turn around and say, you do have three swords. Otherwise, if we drop a sword, pressing the O key, it will now say you only have one sword, so we can reject it. 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a super basic concept for an inventory. You can massively expand this to save and load, add it to your game instance, and then in the next tutorial, we're going to look at adding a UI very similar to the Skyrim one. So we'll add categories, we'll add details to it, and we'll try to make it look really, really nice. So I hope this helps, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.